I bring in Roll Call Associate Politics Editor David Drucker and Real Clear Politics Reporter Aaron McPike. Good to see both of you. Good to be here. Too. All right, so you couldn't be less aggressive or less energetic, arguably, than the president was last time. So he certainly stepped up his game by order and magnitude. Was that enough for a win? Well, I give the president a narrow win on points, and I think that, particularly compared to the last debate, this was the Barack Obama that I think the American people thought they knew and expected to see originally. And he did a very good job of uh, bringing the attack to Mitt Romney, going after him both on policy and on many of the areas personally in a sense that they have attacked him on in terms of his background. I do think though that Mitt Romney held his own and showed that Denver wasn't a fluke in that the Mitt Romney that talks about the economy that is strong on issues that, that what he showed in Denver still existed. It's just this time he had real competition and so you had a much different ball game the political impact of this I think is a draw but this is was very important for the president because his supporters and people that are giving him a look and inclined to vote for him are gonna say hey this guy's still there and I like him well let's talk a little bit more about the style because it was feisty to say the least here's what Frank Bruni wrote in the New York Times at times the candidates communicated such potent disrespect even disdain for each other that you had to remind yourself that one was the president of the United States and one wanted to be. I don't think you could walk away from this debate thinking these guys were friends or had any level of like for each other, Aaron. But I wonder how that's going to play with voters, say, in Ohio or Florida. Sure. Well, in that Libya exchange that you just played a, a moment ago, it was clear that President Obama was seething. And he, you know, he, we talk about how the president doesn't show a lot of emotion sometimes, that he is aloof. Not in this debate. He was, first of all, happy to be there, was thanking voters for taking their questions, and, and was happy in many moments. But in that moment, he said, Mitt Romney, I am the commander-in-chief, and you are not. And I thought that was a huge moment for the president. Let me play a little more of the Libya exchange, because even though most of this debate was about the economy and about domestic issues, this was one of the hottest moments. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden, and I told the American people and the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened that this was an act of terror. I think it's interesting the president just said something which which is that on the day after the attack he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. That's what I said. You said in the Rose Garden the day after the attack it was an act of terror. It was not a Please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden. louder, Candy? He, he did call it an act of terror. Do you think after that, David, that Mitt Romney seemed a little more off his game? Do you think he was rattled by that? I think that the exchange didn't go the way he wanted, and I think he was rattled for a moment, but I thought he recovered. Um, and I think that, you know, he'll have another crack at this on Monday, and it'll be really interesting to see in the foreign policy debate how this goes. Um, I, I thought They're not going to drop I, it. That's clear. No, of course not. And I thought the president... Um, really knocked that whole issue out of the park within that debate and ironically the same way I expected Joe Biden to really knock Libya out of the park against Paul Ryan and it didn't quite work that way uh, we saw the same thing we didn't that I, at least I didn't expect here but I do think uh, well it was an important moment for the president for the overall debate last night this election is still being fought on economic territory and I don't know what the lasting impact of this will be, at least until we see how the foreign policy debate goes. Well, speaking of the economy, the other uh, certainly most talked about moment last night, big line, came when Mitt Romney started answering a question about equal pay for women. And then he, he pivoted to talk about how he tried to hire women for his cabinet when he was governor of Massachusetts. We took a concerted effort to go out and find women who had backgrounds that could be qualified to become members of our cabinet. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. Everywhere you look, Aaron, binders full of women. It was being tweeted. People are buying the websites. Uh, was that awkward? 
Mitt Romney does have awkward answers here and there, and the Democrats are very good at exploiting them and manufacturing a big movement like they have with this binders of, of women comment. It's a big part of this debate. Sure. However, the, the larger answer that Mitt Romney offered was, was actually very good and that he realized that women were not applying to work in his administration and he wanted to see more of them. So by and large, I thought that was, that was fine for him. But no, he, he doesn't answer questions in, in some cases very eloquently.